Hi, I'm Katie Proct Bears, and this is Matthew Lamb. We are here talking with you today about um, the micro operas that are coming up this Monday, April 17th at 8 p.m. This is going to be at the BGSU campus at, in the Conrad Room. And uh, I did wanted to talk to Matthew Lamb to, um, to learn a little bit more about him and about his, his micro opera called Utopia. So Matthew Lamb, hi, it's nice Hello. to talk with you. Um, could you tell us uh, where you're from and what your um, school year is here and your major? Sure, um, I'm Matthew, I'm from Hong Kong and uh, I'm in my final semester of my master's in composition here. Wonderful, wonderful. And do you play any instrument as well? Um, I play the piano and I was in Dr. Yokini Yontop's studio for a year. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and uh, you have a, so your primary function here is to be a composer. Poser, yes. Yeah. Who, who's your primary teacher? Uh, my current teacher is uh, Dr. Michael Keane. Uh, I've, I've been with here with him for a year now. Wonderful. And did, did um, Dr. Keane work on this opera with you, this micro opera? Yes. Um, I, I composed it last year's September to October, around that time. I see. Okay. And then um, could you tell us how you became a composer? What drew you to composition? Um, I started to compose when I was in high school because I think creating something like art and music, it's really fun to make, make something from scratch, from zero, and I eventually chose composition because I like that the most. And also, uh, I was trained classically as a pianist, but uh, when I was playing, playing Mozart and Beethoven, I kind of thought that it's somewhat a little bit boring for me. I it's see. not for me and I wanted to create something that I like instead of playing others music. I understand that completely. That's great. And and this opera, this micro opera is called Utopia. And you now did you have help writing this as far as the libretto, the story is is concerned? Did you have help with it writing that or did you write the libretto yourself? Oh um, I completely wrote it myself. Okay. It takes me some time. Yeah. But I kind of copied some copied some of the phrases from uh, from real life from news, oh, and then I put it into the opera. Okay, could you tell us just a little bit, maybe maybe five sentences or something like that, about what this story is about? Um, the story is set in an authoritarian country where there's no freedom, and you can think of it as something like Nazi Germany or Eastern Bloc. Black, uh, back in the Cold War. So uh, there are two revolutionaries in the story, uh, Grace and Julia. They are a part of a secret revolutionary group and they plan, they plan to uh, overthrow the government, uh, the dictatorship of the country. However, uh, the secret police of the country, the Geheimdienst, uh, discovered, discovered their location and tries to arrest them and send them into jail. So when the story begins, so uh, Grace and Julia know that uh, their location has been discovered, mm -hmm. so they're packing their stuff and try to hide in another place. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a very dramatic piece. There's a, there, are, there is some, uh, this, is the, this is the one that we might give the audience a little bit of warning. There is some implied violence. There is some adult language in this piece. And it's, uh, in, as you said, it's an authoritarian government. So that is, uh, that may be shocking. And it's a very short opera. How did you get so much story into so, such a short time? How did, was it hard to do that? Yes, it's really hard to tell like a really long story in such a short time. So um, what I try to do is, what I try to do is incorporate because I'm writing a libretto, so I can control the story, uh, like, uh, like mode, mode it what, however I want, so that I try to convey most meaning mm -hmm. through the libretto. Right. Yeah. So the opera is about twelve minutes long. It's a very, very significant story with a lot of drama in a in a short period of time, and it breaks down into is it four scenes? It's or so? three scenes. Three scenes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and so you'll have, and you have a really beautiful duet sung by Julia and Grace in the beginning part. 
um, where they're, they're talking about wanting to build a utopia, wanting to find something better than the society they're in currently. Then you have Geheimdienst comes in and sings an aria as well, which is very lovely and, and interesting. And, um, and then there's a, 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 a kind of fight situation that happens. Uh, and then, and then uh, Julia gets to have a nice big um, solo as well. And there's a big surprise finish too. So it's, it's an interesting story to stay and, and, and pay attention to. Uh, that's, that's great. Um, uh, so, and what inspired you to compose this story? Specifically, um, when I was composing the opera, I took inspiration from events from the past and the present, and maybe it's somewhat, maybe, I hope it's not, but it might be talking about the future, the near future. So my inspiration comes from historic events, and I love history. So large part of it is inspired from Nazi Germany, the Cold War, and the protests around the world in the past and. In the current world, mm -hmm. and you're looking at this kind of dystopian uh, situation that these characters are in, and looking for a utopian situation. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Um, and uh, is there are there any unusual themes for us to listen to musically? What what should we be listening for? What kind of musical world will we hear? So musically, so you've mentioned that there are some fights mm -hmm. and violence in the music and. Um, I use some special effects in the instruments to portray the violins, such as uh, Bartok Pizzicato and Cello, and uh, clust uh, chromatic clusters in the piano, and they represent the violins in the music. Okay, yeah. So some banging sounds and some, some kind of scratching sounds? Scratching sound, yes. Yeah, great. And, um, and is this the type of music that you usually write? Actually, no. Yeah, tell us about that. Um, what I usually do is instrumental music that focuses on timbre changes. So my music, so in the past two years, started to have no melody of all, at all, or n not any significant melody, but it is an opera. Mm -hmm. There are tons of melody in it. So it gives me a little bit of hard time <laughs> thinking how to write a melody, which is easy for singers to sing. And it's also uh, effective and expressive. Mm -hmm. And there are now also with the uh, your piece. Are there a lot of time signature changes, or do you keep it kind of one? Can the person tap along with their foot, or does it does that change a lot too? Oh, so for in general, my music has a lot of time signature changes because I don't want to be limit limited by the time signature. It's it's like I have a melody, so the time signature follows the melody instead of the melody follows the time signature. Right. Okay. Well, that's really interesting too. So when our audience is sitting listening there, you may notice if you happen to see the conductor Ezra uh, conducting, you'll see different beat patterns happening over there, and the singers are are it, it changes with the drama. Uh, of the piece and with, as you say, the melody is the reason that the, the time signature changes. That's really interesting for us to listen for. Good. Um, is there anything else about the micro opera that you'd like to share? Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to thank the players and the performers here because they're very talented and they're doing a very good job and I believe that it'll be very great. Yes, I think it will be really fun. Everybody's been working on this for quite some time and we're excited to share this with you. Is there anywhere that, that our audience can, can find you on internet, on the um, social media, anywhere they can look for you? Yes, absolutely. I have a website, so uh, in Google you type Matthew Lamb Composer. It should pop out in the first search, I believe. And I also have a YouTube and SoundCloud. You can listen to other of my music. Wonderful. So Matthew Lamb, L-A-M. Matthew Lamb, composer, is where you can find him online. So please join us uh, April 17th. That's this Monday at 8 o'clock on the BGSU campus, the Wolf Center. Inside there, you'll find the Conrad Choral Room, and that's where we'll be performing. Uh, it's a, we begin at 8 o'clock. It should be about an hour long, including uh, Matthew Lamb's Utopia and two other micro-operas. We look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Thank you.